Let's get some updates on the tiny human brains you can grow from stem cells. Yes, there is an entire field where people just grow tiny human brains and have them do stuff like run computation. They can embody them in game world. They have both long-term and short-term memory, and they are technically sentient because they're capable of having an experience. This research group decided to embody them in Pac-Man and used electric shocks to teach them. I've seen multiple papers where people try to teach them with various input. They do generally seem to do better when they're given both positive and negative reinforcement. This one bugged me because they essentially shocked them until they did something right. One of the major limitations on brain work annoyance is that they tend to suffer from hypoxia because they do not have, you know, a heart or largely a blood-brain barrier, but there's been a great deal of progress in that. This group gave them veins, so they essentially grew vascular organoids, so a vascular system that's grown from stem cells, along with the brain organoids in 3D printed veins directly into their core. So this way, they can get oxygen and they do a lot better. From what I've read, they can be kept alive for a year or more, and they tend to follow the development of a preterm baby. Yes, they have found delta and beta brainwaves, so delta are the ones that are associated with things like being in a coma or generally asleep. Stuff like beta and alpha is associated with wakefulness, and while they're not as complex as, you know, a human brain, they are growing more complex the longer they're kept alive. You can, in fact, combine a organoid with AI, although there are a lot of limitations. You can't run an entire LLM on a brain organoid any more than you could run an entire LLM on your brain, but there are things that you are good at. Language recognition, for example, is one of the things that they excel at, and people have used brain organoids with AI and let them learn unsupervised, and they learn to recognize the voices of the researchers. This group taught them Braille. Now, when assembloids are built, that means multiple brain organoids and other organs put together, they're essentially making a tiny body. People have been learning how to do this, essentially blind, and they keep looking to nature to try to manufacture a better form for them to use. It did surprise me that the more complex brain organoids are actually better at doing computation. I would have expected single cell types would be efficient. But no, multiple cell types, multiple lobes, they do better. And that's one of the reasons that people have been combining brain organoids into lobed brains for robotics. In this case, you know, that was a brain organoid system that played Pac-Man. I, I still haven't quite gotten over that one. They just gave them electric shocks until they found food so that they could get a break from the stress. This is why they're considered technically sentient, because they have the capacity to feel something and they have the capacity to want something. Going after food in Pac-Man and avoiding the ghost because you'll get an electric shock does seem remarkably sentient. Now, they're not technically conscious. Consciousness is a very difficult thing to demonstrate because it's more philosophical than scientific. How do we demonstrate that something has the concept of self? If you can just connect them by axons and they work together, do they have a concept of self? I do not know. We won't know until they tell us, and at the rate that this field is moving, they might tell us one day soon. Since this field is moving quite so fast, I would like to bring us back to the question of what is ethical. At what point are we experimenting on tissue versus experimenting on a being? Because at what point does something become a being? Am I a being? I don't have answers to this.